What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. I see that comment from Garrison Coltra, who's Ava's the GOAT. Thank you so much for that. I have a hat that says GOAT that one of my students got me, by the way. And uh, that's a term I'm very familiar with from the MMA world. And uh, well, I really appreciate that. All right, just doing a quick sound check. What's up, everybody? All right, we're good. Okay, uh, exam is tomorrow, and we are ready to rock out with everybody. We got a new set of predictions based on, you know, it's kind of a revised version based on the October test that was just released. So we're going to be going through that today. And then after we do the prediction section for the paper version, what I want to show you guys is something very special today for all you digital SAT test takers. If you guys, I know it's late some places in the world if you guys are watching right now, but, but I want to get this out so you can at least watch it at some point or worst case tomorrow morning for the digital SAT, we're gonna do calculator hacks on Desmo. So basically what I'm gonna do is we're gonna jump through one of the practice tests from the College Board and I'm gonna show you every problem that I feel like is fully solvable in the calculator. I'm gonna show you how I would do it, okay? Um, what's up, Said? I'm good, man. Just chilling, doing my thing, getting ready for uh, you know another good old fashioned SAT. Here we go. Here is the prediction part. So. What people have told me thus far is my predictions have been really accurate, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really happy about that. I've noticed that, and, and that's fantastic. Uh, obviously, I'm guessing, so just take everything I say with a grain of salt, but I'm just trying to flag major trends. Now, obviously, there is predictability and routine in the SAT in general. If you take enough practice, I guarantee you're going to see repetitions of like same type of question types and foundational principles that are being tested in similar ways, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just trying to cut through to some of the more unique type of problems that I think are going to be sh showing up more likely based on trends that I'm observing in the last few years. So that's what this is. And hopefully for those little fringe, weird, difficult problems, I'm going to give you a good heads up of what to expect and how to, how to hit them out of the park. Okay. So let's jump in. By the way, I would also recommend you re-watching my prediction video for the October and the August SAT if you're going into this because as I'm, or at least one of them actually, I think the other one was the, uh, October was pretty much the same as August because there was no new, no new data, no new test that was released. So watch my October one as well. And then that'll give you the full picture of everything that I've kind of modified and took out of this presentation will be in there and you get a fuller picture. Okay, um, here we go. So let's get into it. So for the U.S. paper version of the SAT, we're going to start with that first. First, one of the things that I've been noticing a lot are these systems of inequalities. Uh, these are non-graphical ones. And what I usually do with these is just a straight plug and chug to figure out what's what. Okay, And this is, I think, from a no calculator section, too, so you can't even rely on the calculator. But for this, you know, you're just going to plug and chug through. I got 1, 1. Does it work for both? It fails for the first one. Out. Uh, negative 2, negative 2. Let's see if I can even get an annotation tool up here. Hold on. I have to do this. Get the web paint, and then I gotta reload, blah, blah, blah. Okay, hold on, let me present your view again. Okay, here we go. So now I should be able to use web paint. All right, so, you know, I'm plugging in that, I'm plugging in that one, one, so right, one is not greater than four, it's out. This one, negative two is greater than negative eight, that works, this one, negative two is less than, and that would be positive two, that's out. Um, I think it's gonna be D, no, it's going to be C probably. So this one here, let me get rid of all this. So for C, we're plugging in negative 3 for Y, 3 for X, negative 3. Oh, no, 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 it's not that one. It's going to be D because that fails uh, this one. And then here you have 4 is greater than negative 16. That works. And then here you'd have 4 is oh, less than 4. Wait, that doesn't work. Hold on, hold on. Back up, back up. Hold on. Let's do it again. 1 is great. Okay, A is definitely out. B, negative 2 is greater than negative 8. Correct. Negative 2 is oh. It is, it is B, my bad. <laughs> but that's how I normally do it. Little plug and jug. It made a mistake there, but it, that does happen. Negative two is indeed less than two, so B is the winner. But that's how I do them. It's pretty quick, even if you make a mistake. Uh, this one would be a little bit longer, but again, you're going through the table and you're plugging in each of these values into each inequality, and it's got to pass both of them. I found that that seems to be the most effective way as long as you're nice and careful. Okay, and then here's another one that popped up on the October SAT that I wanted to show you guys. So this is a nice system of linear inequalities again showing up, okay? But now it's a graphical version. Now this one's pretty cool because if you notice, here, let me change the color here so you can see it a little better. If you notice, all of the lines are the same and it's all greater, oh, that's not the color I wanted. How do I change that color? Oh, there we go. Okay, so what you'll notice is every single line is the exact same. 
which means there's nothing that's not gonna be 2x plus 3 and 0.5x minus 6. The question is, where is the shading, right? So in a shading problem, just to reiterate, when it says less than 2x plus 3, which is actually, let me change that color. So I'll make one of them uh, red so you can kind of distinguish. Okay, here we go. So this one is red and then the other one will be blue. Like that, okay? And so it's the same with that for each. So let the blue is this guy with the steeper slope, okay? And the red with that slope of one half is the less steep one. And it's also got the lower y intercept at negative six. So it's saying that we want above the red. Let me see if I can use a different tool. No, I can't, but that's okay. So we want above the red like that. And then we want below the blue. That's the lesson. So below the blue. So the intersection of the two would be this little slice here. Okay. So that's how you can think about it. And again, another thing that you can do if you want to double check a question like this, you'd be like, all right, well then this should be in the solution set, right? That's five comma zero. Does five comma zero work in both equations? Zero is less than or equal to 13. Yes. Zero is greater than half of five is 2.5 minus six is a negative number. Zero is greater than that. So it satisfies it. That's another way. Boom, done. All right. Next, we got the quadratic formula. I talked about this in the other previous uh, prediction video. So we see that the quadratic formula keeps popping up on these. I think I saw one recently. It wasn't on the October, but it was a digital practice SAT that was really interesting where you didn't even need the quadratic formula, but it was prompting you to do it. Now, the main point why I bring this up is the giveaway that this is referencing the quadratic formula is they're saying the solution involves some sort of a square root. So that's your indication I'm immediately going to think about quadratic formula, whether or not you need it, it's going to work no matter what. So you may as well just dive in with that mindset. But my quadratic formula to get the solution is negative B. So we got A, B, and C. So we got negative B, which is negative negative 2, which is 2, plus or minus square root of B squared, 2 squared, which is 4, negative 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4. A is 1, and C is negative 1, right? So the negatives are going to cancel out 4, and it's over 2A. 2 times 1 is 2. So we got 2 plus or minus 4 plus 4 is 8 over 2. Simplify this. 2 plus or minus 2 red 2 over 2. 2's cancel out, and we get 1 plus or minus red 2. Now you can see that N is 1 and K is 2, right? N is this value outside of the square root. K is the value inside. 1 plus 2 is 3. That's how you do it. Done. All right. Let's move on. Uh, this is another similar situation, right? Immediately, I see that that reminds me of the quadratic formula outcome, especially with that plus or minus. So we got uh, we got to plug it in. I won't do it again, but it's that same idea. Labeling everything with A, B, and C, plugging and chugging, and that's the way we do it. All right. Uh, one more example, right? So these are coming up a lot in the last few years. That's why I'm pointing it out. They're coming up a lot. They didn't come up so much before. Uh, it's a nice little it's a nice little transition or change in the college board strategy so something to be aware of all right let's move on to the next trend i'm no another one right so many these are all within the last few years geometric proofs these definitely didn't show up in the early on test but now they're popping up a lot so if you look at the geometric proofs right we're looking for sufficient actually i'll be honest i just got one i took one yesterday that i still haven't reinvestigated but they had another really tricky one on the october and you know in all honesty i answered i answered it incorrectly according to them uh, i, I do want to talk about it a little bit more at some point in the future because i feel like my analysis was actually pretty good um, it was an ambiguous case of a triangle, so I don't know. I'm going to do more research. I wonder if the College Board is actually incorrect on that one. They may not be and probably aren't, but um, it, it, that, that's the reason why I picked it. But we'll come back to that. Bottom line is you need to know your triangle congruence theorems and similarity theorems. So this is something that's saying which is sufficient to prove they are congruent. And I got two angles are congruent, really, meaning angle-angle similarity, meaning the third angle is also sim uh, congruent. You also know that because they also add up to 180, so we can figure that out. So what do I need? All I need is one pair of corresponding sides because I can get angle, side, angle. That's all I need. The length of one side alone is not sufficient. The measure of a third angle is not sufficient because I can already calculate those measures. And yes, they are both 97. The length of BC being equal to EF. There we go. That's beautiful. It's in between the two same angles. And if those two are equal, we got angle, side, angle. And then the measure of BAC. Again, I don't care about a third angle. Three angles is not enough to prove congruence. Uh, for this one, now we're talking about, what is this? Is this... Oh, yeah. So this one, we're talking about a singular triangle. But again, you know, what's sufficient to, to calculate certain things? So if I know we got 
uh, where is it? A is 40, B is the right angle, A can be 40, so then this would have to be 50, right? Because in a right triangle, the other two angles are, are uh, complementary. And then A is this, C is this. Always make sure to draw out a triangle. That's another big, big, big tip. But then it said AC is 12, which of the following can be, uh, can be determined using the information. So measure of angle C, obviously we can calculate it because I did calculate it, so that's a given. Now the side, side length of AB, this is a little bit of a tricky one, right? We know we have angle side angle, so we know we have a definitive triangle. So theoretically, you should be able to find every other side. Now, you might think, I'm not sure if I can do that with Pythagorean theorem or special right triangles, but of course you can leverage trigonometry. You could do it a couple different ways. One way would be using, let's see, sine. So I could say sine, uh, what was it, uh, AB, right? I could say sine of 50, which would be opposite, which could be, you know, that's our unknown that we're solving for AB, over hypotenuse, which is 12. Now you have an equation. So you could figure it out. So we would say one and two, all right? So be familiar with these, with these theorems. Last but not least, we got this one. We got two angles are congruent. Again, that means the third angle we can figure out as well. 110, not that it matters, but the bottom line is they're congruent, okay? And now we're trying to pr prove what, what makes these congruent. And we know they're similar. Again, I just need one pair of corresponding sides. So angles are going to do nothing for me. Um, obviously, additional information will help. So the question is, which one of these are those um, related sides, right? Well, BC and EF, BC and EF, would this do the trick? This would, because again, it's in between 35 and 110, 35 and 110. That would constitute corresponding side, and that would give us an angle side angle. AC and DE, uh-uh, because AC is opposite 35, DE is opposite 110. That wouldn't do it. Those would not qualify as corresponding sides. We need corresponding sides to be congruent. So B is the winner. That's how you do it. All right, moving on to 24. So for this one, in the figure shown, GE, okay, so what does it give us? GE and DH intersect the point F. Cool, cool. And does anything is parallel? No, it doesn't. Okay, so which of the, it's proved to similar. So if we want similarity, all we need is angle, angle similarity, usually is all we're looking at. Now there's also two other theorems, side, angle, side, meaning the sides are proportionate and the angle in between is congruent, or side, 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 meaning all three sides are proportionate in the same way. Okay, obviously we don't have any side information, side, 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 or side, angle, side, that's gonna be a stretch. But we do have these angles. And that's important to remember because those are vertical angles. They're always congruent. Now, if we're trying to prove similar, length of DE is one-third that of HG. That's pretty good, right, if that's one-third. But I need one other side. I can't just have one proportionate side, right? I need one other proportionate side. By the way, it's got to be side, angle, side. So an angle's got to be wrapped up in between the two proportionate sides. With this side up here, that's no good. But with the parallel situation, that's legend. Because with the parallel situation, I now know that if those are parallel, this is a nice transversal. We got some congruent angles here as well. Alternate interior angles. That gives me my angle-angle similarity. So this is the winner. Two is sufficient. I would say one is not. That's how you do it. Done. All right, let's move on. Another example here, right? Again, starting off with those, uh, excuse me, starting off with those vertical angles and we're again trying to prove that they're similar. If I can get one more angle, I'm good to go. Oh, and also says, does it say anything else? No. Which of the following is not sufficient? Okay, so when they say AB is parallel to DE, as we showed in the last example, that would take us there because that we could, we could mark off other angles and whatever. But they said not sufficient, so we gotta eliminate that. D is equal to B. Again, that would give us angle, angle. So that would be sufficient, goodbye. Um, let's see these other ones. A, B is equal to D, E. That's probably the winner. Let's skip to this one. A is equal to the measure of B. Um, wait, they're saying this. And then they're saying, and D is equal to the measure of E. Yeah, <clears throat> that would actually be enough because if these two are equal and these two are uh, to each other, the, and these two are equal, and these, uh, I, I, okay, wait, let me give an example because it's other, confusing to explain. If these are 50, right? Let's say those are 50. If these two are equal, they must be 65 and 65 because all of them have to add up to 180. If this is 50 and these two are equal, they also have to be 65. So again, we get the angle-angle similarity. So C is the winner. All right, good, good, good. Let me see. Um, somebody got a 1360, Nathaniel, amazing, congratulations. All right, um, 
geometry. Could you give advice? I have a 578 math section problem solving. 100 out of 100 geometry is zero. All right. Well, we're doing some geometry right now, so stick with us here. Another common example is the volume of a right triangle. I've seen these volumes of prisms questions. Just remember, it's the area of the base, which is the repeated shape that's extended out times that height. That's that length that it's extended. So they tell us that, you know, if the volume is, nine, this is going backwards, right? 96 equals base, which we're trying to solve for times height. Got a nice equation like that. It's eight. That's how you do it. Okay, here we go. Scatter plots. This is a new category that I've added because I noticed this a few times in the last section, so in the last test. So I, uh, I'm saying, hey, be on the lookout for some of these scatter plot problems. Literally two right in the same section. I don't know if that's a trend that is going to pop up again. Again, and watch my previous prediction video just to cover your bases. But scatter plots. I'm feeling pretty confident we're going to see some scatter plots. So. This is a classic scatter plot question, and this is just saying, hey, when x equals 4 right here, what is the value, uh, closest y value predicted? That means we're just looking right here. Where does, it hit, where does it hit that line? It's at 10. Now, one thing that's important to note, they didn't make this question too hard. It's an early question. But if you have a point up here, that's how they're going to try and trick you. They want you to look at this and be like, wait a minute, is it 10 or is it 18? When they said Y value predicted, they're talking about line of best fit, not the real data points. If they said, what is the real data at X equals four, then you ignore the line of best fit and you have to look at that point. So that's just a quick explanation there. And we got another scatter plot example. So in this one, what now we're, we're using the scatter plot and we're just straight up coming up with an equation. Don't think anything beyond a linear equation. You can pretty much ignore the points here and say, all right, we got a y-intercept of two, a slope of one, and there's my equation. They just flipped it around, but it's D, boom, done. All right, let's move it on. Quadratic graphs. Okay, this is another new one that I've, I'm pulling mostly from the actual. Now, I pulled it from a couple other exams, but this is from a previous test. I think this is March or May 2023. But uh, this was one that I did notice. So they've got a nice graph of a quadratic. They give you this formula, and they want you to figure out what is the value of k. All right? So when you look at this, like this is in a weird format. So what I can do is I can simplify this a little bit. This, this would be my strategy. Okay. Uh, actually, wait a minute. That's actually a much easier strategy. Never mind. The easiest strategy would be to just straight up plug and chug, right? You're trying to figure out K and we have a really clear point here, four comma eight. So I can just plug in. I'll show you what I was thinking initially. Um, but if I plug it in, eight would equal Y and then you plug in four for X. So it's negative four times four minus eight, which is also negative four over K. And we got 16 over k equals 8, which means k equals 2. The other thing that I was going to do was, since we had that vertex, assuming we didn't have like full information here, we could multiply this out and make it negative x squared plus 8x, and then both of those would be over k, right? And then using our vertex form, this is more complicated. I'm acknowledging that in retrospect, but in vertex form, we know the vertex is the x value of the vertex is negative b, which is in front of the x, so that's negative 8 over k, over 2a. 2a, or a is negative 1 over k, so that'd be negative 2 over k, right? And, oh, this doesn't really, this wouldn't have worked. This wouldn't have worked because the k's would just cancel out and you get 4. And you're like, well, that the, the k's are irrelevant there, so that wouldn't have worked. Um, but that was where my mind was initially going, Some somehow getting that vertex formula and using it. It wouldn't have worked, but this is a much easier question, just straight plug and chug. All right, let's move on to the, to the next section, which is circle equations, which I've seen pop up a bunch more, too, on the last October test. That's why I plopped it in here into this prediction video. So we had a couple examples. Um, this was a really interesting one. I haven't seen one like this in a very long time, but I liked it a lot. It was a it was sort of a hybrid of typically like, hey, just what's the radius to, hey, now let's take that and use our circle area equation, which is area equals pi r squared. And I really like this. So first we have to get the radius. How do we do that? We got to get this into standard form. So that, that, which does make this quite a difficult problem. So first we're going to do that by completing the square, by adding half of this and, and squaring it, which is 25. And then with the y squared, same thing. Oh, I think this is meant to be a y. I think that's a typo. Um, that's my recollection too from the other version. Okay, so then minus 6y, and then half of that, which is negative 3 squared, is 9, and then that equals 30, but then you got to add the 25 and the 9 as well, okay? 
So when you do that, you get 64 on that side. Now, I can put this in that nice factor form, but we don't need to, but it would be like this. When you factor, okay, because it's a perfect square, so is that. But it doesn't matter because we just want the radius, which square to 64 is 8, okay? And the radius is 8. How do we get area of a circle? Right here, 8 squared, 64 times pi. D is the winner. So I like that problem a lot. Quick refresh, if you want to see our critical concept videos, you can see how to complete the square and get that standard form of a circle if you need more thorough review, all right? Here we had another one that was really interesting. So which equation represents a circle? And it has a center here and a point here. So this is a comp, this is a tough one, it's 29. Obviously, one of the last questions in the calculator, very hard. How do I kind of pull this together? So initially I would say, hey, we got x minus negative three, which is plus three squared plus y minus, you know, the center value coordinate, which is 4 squared, equals the radius squared. So I already know this is out, because it's the wrong sign. This is out. It's got to be b or d. Question is, what's the radius? So, because over here we got radius squared. So the radius is either the square root of 10 or the, well, fourth root of 10, which seems weird. It's probably d. But anyways, um, how do we use this other point on the outside of the circle? Well, if I know the center is here and this is a point, I just got to do distance formula. So let's do that now. Distance formula is square root of the difference of the x values, negative 3 minus negative 2, which is negative 1, squared, plus 4 minus 1, which is 3, squared. So we got that's 1, that's 9. So the radius is the square root of 10. But we don't want radius here. We want radius squared, which is square root of 10 squared is 10. So d is the winner. That's how you do it. Okay, let's see. All my homies hate circle theorem. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're tricky. Well, this is like, you know, the circle equations are a tough problem, but if you have the formula memorized, you're good to go. Um, okay, let's move it on. Any tips for stress for exam day? Yeah, I got a lot of tips for stress. Uh, let, me, let me quickly tell you my tips, some of them. So first of all, obviously, make sure you get a really good night's rest. That's gonna help a lot in terms of waking up with the right balance of hormones and chemicals in your body. You wanna make sure you get good sleep. Eat carefully. You want to stay away from sugars and things like that that are going to give you spikes. Believe it or not, that's going to that's going to play a big contribution. So want to have good, healthy fats. I always say eggs are a phenomenal choice for breakfast. Maybe some uh, meat along with that too, turkey, uh, whatever your preference is. And good fats, you know, nice avocado. Even, even that animal fat is going to be solid for your brain and for everything. Now, if you're talking about just straight up calming yourself down, Meditation might seem daunting if you've never done it, but the bottom line is the, one of the key elements of meditation and why it calms your parasympathetic nervous system down, parasympathetic nervous system down is because it's the deep breaths. So do your best on the way. Just be conscientious of like, you know, taking those nice deep breaths, holding it in, and then just like that, and then repeating. holding it, and you can even find guided meditations for free on YouTube, but I highly recommend it. It might not feel it right away, but eventually as you do it for a good 10 minutes, you'll be surprised. You could do it if your mom or dad is driving you to the test, do it on the way to the test center. Take some, do some breathing exercises. I have a meditation coach and it really does wonders for me. All right, last one, another example of a circle equation. And we got this one representing a circle, and then we're shift, this is a, this is a transformation. Uh, this is a transformation circle hybrid, uh, right? So we're shifting it down. Oops, uh-oh, let me go backwards. We're shifting it down by two units. So what is a down by two units? That means we are affecting the y value by two, by negative two. So it's minus two like this. And then we got x squared like this equals 49. So what are, what are we going to end up with that transformation? It's just y minus three, Right? x squared plus y minus 3 squared. No, nothing else is changing. So anyways, I've been seeing a lot of these transformations actually too now that I think about it. So it's not explicitly part of this video in terms of a prediction, but be mindful of those transformations. Make sure you're, you're well aware of how they work. Okay. Slopes of radii and tangents. This is an interesting one. I've been seeing this a lot as well. Make sure you remember one important relationship, that a tangent line is perpendicular meaning forms a right angle, to a radius. And that's important because they've been testing about this a lot. And so if I know the slope, for example, of the radius, which would be, what would it be? 4 over negative 5. 
then I know the slope of the tangent line is positive 5 fourths, the opposite reciprocal, okay? And you can use that to then kind of figure out what this question is asking. Another, you know, you can kind of come up with the equation. Here, I'll just do it real quick. Using point slope, y minus the y value, which is plus 3, equals 5 fourths times x minus 4. So there's my equation of this line, and then you see which point lies on it. You can do a little plug and chug. Um, what would it be? It would be 8, 4, 5... I think it's 8, 2. So if I plug in 8, 2, so I plug in 2 on this side, so 2 plus 3, which is 5, equals 8 minus 4, which is 4. 5 fourths times 4 is 5. 5 equals 5. It works. That's how you do it. All right, let's move on. And thank you guys, everybody who's joining. Thank you for all the likes you've given so far. I really appreciate it. If you haven't liked it yet and you do find this uh, information useful, helpful, etc., a like will be much appreciated. We're trying to grow and push the channel to the next level. So all of that is fantastic if you are finding this indeed useful and helpful. Okay, we got another tangent line here. Same dealio, right? We got that slope of that radius and whatever that is, the opposite reciprocal will be the slope of this. Ne uh, negative four minus negative five is one over negative five minus negative seven is two. So we got a slope of one half. That means the slope of K is negative two. And that does look like a negative two, right? Um, that's how you do it. Boom, done. All right. Exponential graphs. This has been popping up a lot lately as well. We got a nice exponential graph. And it's, this is one that gets me sometimes. It says the graph of not f of x, the graph of f of x minus 1 is shown. That's a, with a vertical translation down by 1. So the real graph would look like this, right? It would look like 1 up. Everything is 1 up. Everything is 1 up. So the real graph of f of x would look like this. And that's very important to recognize. Now you can answer the question. Which could define f? Well, notice I have a y-intercept of 3. If I plug in 0, do I get 3? No, I get 1. Plug in 0, do I get 3? No. Plug in 0, do I get 3? No, because I get 1 plus 1 is 2. What about here? 2 to the 0th is 1 plus 2 is 3. D is the winner. Boom, done. Somebody is asking, uh, Venkatash is asking, do I have any tips on time management? I do, oh, wait. Somebody's saying, wait, Ryan, sorry. Let me ask, answer your question first. So we left minus the x. Um, so if we left... If left, we minus the x. If right, we plus the x. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exa uh, no, 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 no. The x is backwards. So for transformations, good question. For x, you'd minus 5 would go to the right by 5. Plus 5. So if it was like f of x minus 5, you're actually going to the right by 5. f of x plus 5, you're actually going to the left. So for the x is its opposite. The y is its as is. All right, so that's a good question to ask. But anyways... That's how you do it. And then we have tips on time management. My, my main tip for time management is practice as much as possible. So then time is not an issue. That's what I found with every single one of my students. If you have to, have to manage your time because you're going in and you haven't done much preparation and you're kind of doing a triage situation, I'll share the video for that. Hold on. Uh, let me go here. How can I pull it up? Let's do it like this. One second. I'm going to pull it up here. SAT math time management. Do, 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 do. What's up, everybody? Okay, I'm going to post the link here. Uh, uh, here's time management for you. Um, I think it was Venkatash, right? So Venkatash, there you go. There's my video on time management. So check that out. Uh, it kind of explains the breakdown of the time and all that stuff um, that, that can be useful for you. All right, but if you are taking it again in December, practice like crazy before that time. That's what I would recommend. All right, here we go. Um, the uh, what is this? Oh yeah, last one. Some of solutions. Okay, this is one that I you know it's been on here for a long time, but do, I have noticed it lately in the last couple of years. So sum of solutions. The formula is negative b over a. You want to remember that where a, b, and c are those ones. So it's a shortcut. You don't have to solve for the solutions. It's quick. Negative b is negative negative one which is 1, over A, which is 1, it's 1. But if you need to, fine. Factor x um, minus 4, x plus 3, because those multiplied negative 12 add to negative 1. My solutions are 4 and negative 3. Add those together, and you do get 1. Not too much longer, but, you know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to the really fun stuff, I think, which is I'm going to show you a bunch of Desmos hacks. Now, we got the test queued up here. And I'm excited about it because I love Desmos and I use it all the time. So hopefully I think I can give you some cool insights. We're going to do another video that's going to be focused specifically 
on Desmos um, hacks that's going to be more formatted, but I want to do one quick one here today. So what I'm going to do, let me see how I can figure this out, how I can show you clearly. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Desmos like this. And we'll do it here. Let's see. Let me get this in a nice format. So we're going to say, I'm going to move it over here maybe. And we got a little sliver of Desmos. Kind of like how it'll pop up when you open it. Because I think still the the College Board app doesn't, it doesn't properly pop up. Well, well let's see. Let's see. Maybe it does. Maybe they fixed it. Um, oh, no. It's right there. Beautiful. All right. So what we're going to do in this section is I'm going to just go through and every test that I'm going to show you the... I'm going to show you there's a calculator hack for it where you can do the entire problem on the calculator. I'm going to do it. And if not, I'm going to skip it. Now, this one, there's not really much to do, right? You're just counting. So we're going to skip it. Um, there is a calculator hack for this. Obviously, the, the fastest thing to do is foil. But if you want, you can go like this. You're like, oh, I don't know what the, I don't remember how to do this. Plug in the main equation. And we're talking about equivalent expressions, right? So that one's in red. Now let's start to plug in all the answers. X minus four times X plus 10. We're looking for something that overlaps completely. Doesn't overlap. Boom, done. Now we got X minus five times X plus eight. Does that overlap? Yes, it does. B is the winner. Boom, done. You see? Calculator hacks. Amazing. Okay, next one. We got speed. This one's not really a great, wait, wait, wait. Is this a good guy? It runs at a speed of five miles per hour. Yeah, this one, you have to understand the equation. You can't really use the calculator, so we're going to move on. That's interpreting an equation. Um, this one, you can't really use the calculator because you got to know that triangles add up. But this is in the reference sheet. So you know that the sum of angles in a triangle is 180. So you can leverage that, but not really a Desmos hack here. Same with this one, not really a Desmos hack. That's interpretation. Okay, now, I mean, look, obviously you're going to need Desmos here. It was not really a Desmos hack. If we're saying if one of these tiles is selected at random, which you know that's the total, which is 100, what is the probability of selecting, oops, either way, we need to do, ah, what is the probability of selecting a red, uh, red tile? One of these tiles is selected at random. What is the probability of selecting red? So we, what's the total of red? And you just do like that. But uh, that's not a Desmos hack per se. Okay, um, same thing. You're going to use a calculator, but it's not really a Desmos hack for this one. This is basically using your percentages, whatever. Um, okay, this is an interesting one. You can use a Desmos hack here. So if you're, you know, you know, of course you can solve it algebraically, but look at this. If you do the left side is one equation, the right side is another equation, you can put a Y equals as well if you want, but you don't need it. So we'll say Y equals Y equals. We're looking for when they're equal, AKA where they intersect. Where do they intersect? At X equals five, right? So that's a cool little hack. Um, another one, this is an interpretation, no hack there. Okay, amazing hack here, obviously, right? It's looking for a G intercept, same as a Y intercept, graph it, right? Again, this is faster if you don't use the calculator, I'm not gonna lie, but if you use it, hey, what's my G intercept? Let's see where it hits the, where does it hit the, um, ooh, it's a little hard to see, huh? What? Oh, Y intercept. What am I saying? It said Y intercept, not G. <laughs> not X intercept. Look at the wrong thing. Y intercept is right here, 0, 11. Now, could you have plugged 0 in and quickly gotten 11? Yeah, it probably would have been faster. But if you forgot, like, hey, I don't know what to do, just graph it. Throw it in Desmos. It's so, such a, oh, I shouldn't close it. It's such a good app. Uh, the circle has a circumference of blah, 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 blah. Um... No, no real Desmos hack here. Got to know the formula. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you can find a Desmos hack here. So we know, oops, I dropped my pen. We know that the area of a circle is length times width, okay? And so there's my function for that. And we're setting, now look, you can set it equal to 76 right here and, and go like this. I don't like to do that because it creates a straight line that's a little confusing for some people, um, but it does create a straight line with the correct value of x. Instead, I like to do it separately. We got that, and then what does it equal? 76. And then I look for the intersection point. So where is 70? Oops, I need y equals 76, my bad. Where is the intersection point? Right here, okay? And there's another intersection point right here. So we're not taking a negative value for x because that would be a negative length. But right there, it's 19, you see? So you can do, you can use this really easily. You can also foil it out, solve algebraically, but it's a nice little hack. All right, moving on. 
Um, let's see. Frozen made no additional deposits, which the following best expresses. This one's not really gr uh, Wait. No. Great Desmos hack. Uh, let's say you're totally clueless on this. All right. I'm not going to do every choice. Let's go with the one that I know is correct, which would be, I think it's C. But pretend you don't know that, and you're going to go through and you're going to test everything. So we got Y equals, let's see, 604 times 1 plus 0 0.004. And now instead of saying to the X power, I'm going to say to the A power, okay? And, oh, it doesn't allow you to add a slider. Oh. <gasps> Doesn't allow you to add a slider in here like normal. Okay, then that doesn't, okay. So we're not gonna be able to add a slider. So what you're gonna do is if you're like, I think this is the right answer, right? So I'm taking that formula. I'm gonna plug in different values of T because I already have three values of T up here. So they need to match these three values. And if all three match, or even two match probably, but if all three match, you're in. Zero, look at that, I get the 604. One, I get 606.416, which is rounded to 0.42. And two, whoops. 608.84, boom, we got our winner. So C is the answer. Um, product of solutions, is there a shortcut? Yeah, it's the formula is uh, C over A. Uh, so so that who's asking that? That is Ryan Mart Martin, yeah, so here, let me show you. Uh, well, yeah, I don't even think I have an infographic for it, but just like the sum is negative B over A, the product is C over A. Here, I'll give you an example. Oh, I can't annotate up here. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. Let me put this back up. Um, okay, so for example, if I had, here, let's show you. X squared plus four, I'm doing something that's easy to factor. Plus, let's see, one and four, one and three, plus three, okay? So if I factor this, I'd get X minus, I mean, sorry, X plus three, X plus one with two solutions of negative three and negative one, right? The, the product of those is three. Or I could say C over A, boom, there's my product, okay? So that's just a quick example. All right, let's drop this back down. Oh, all right, how many points did the graph of the equation, blah, 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 all right, great, Desmos hack. So how many points do they intersect? If you're not sure, now you can, I, you, this should be an instantaneous one if you know that lines with different slopes always intersect at one point. But if you don't know, just graph them out. They intersect at one point, boom, done. Um, this one, how many more points is the red token worth? This is interpreting, not really a Desmos hack. This you can use as Desmos hack, okay? So which represents the number of bacteria T days after start of the equation? So it's saying it doubles every day. Why is this a great Desmos hack? And I'm gonna go to the equation that I know is right. I'm not gonna check all of them, but you can check all of them. It just takes a little longer. So imagine I'm like, all right, I think it's this one. I'm not sure. Again, you know it doubles every day. Well, you know at day zero, meaning if I plug in zero, I should get 44,000. I do. All right, so that works. I should say at day one, it should double to 88,000. I plug in one, I do, it doubles. And day two, it should double again to 160, 176, plug it in. Aha, so D works. Now you could try with the other ones. Maybe one or two of those will work, but not all, or maybe one will work, I'm sorry, but, but not two or three. Usually, if you get two to connect, you're good to go. Three, just to make sure that you didn't like make a mistake or something. Uh, this one, you need a formula. This one, solution given system equations. Yeah, this is beautiful for Desmos. Watch this, just write it in, 6x plus 7y equals 28, 2x plus 2y equals 10. By the way, if you guys are studying for the digital SAT, make sure to click our description link below. I believe it's in there. It, the SAT crash course is our, our partner now. And if you use the code SCALAR, all caps, you get 20% off whatever digital SAT practice you wanna buy. So just as a reminder, I think it's in the description. If not, I'll put it in at the end. Um, but anyways, Look, graph the two equations. The solution is where they intersect, which is right here. Seven, negative two, the answer is negative two. And if you wanna double check, if you're not unsure, plug it in. 42 plus negative 14, 28. 14 plus negative four is 10, it works, okay? Um, can you do a hack with this one? I think you could if you drew it out. Wait, let me think. We know that cosine of, so J, uh, I mean, I always draw these out. Uh, would we, 
trying to think here. Y equals co. Uh, okay, I guess. Oh wait, you can do a, a hack. Oh my god, I just thought of this. Check this out. Cosine of x is equal to twenty four over fifty one, and make sure this is gonna come back in radians. So look at this. You can do it. I never thought about this. This might be overly complicated because normally I just draw out the triangle and leverage my trigonometry like knowledge. This is not as pretty, but if you're totally stumped, you can do this. So cosine of x, cosine of k in this case, equals 24 over 51. And it hits it right there. Look at the first intersection after you're crossing the y-axis. So the answer for x is 1.081. Now granted, that's in radians, but that's what k is. Now, if j is the right angle, that means L is complement. All right, this is like not so pretty, right? But L is complementary, which means L is pi over two minus whatever that was, which we got was, um, what did we get? One, 1 1.081, right? 1.081. So that's the angle. And then, this is not pretty, but you can do it. Then you can take cosine of this. It can be approximate, but pretty close. And we get uh, our answer. Wait, that's not. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right because that is. What is that going to be? That's going to be. I think that's the right answer. But OK, now I'm going to show you how to properly do it. So cosine is 24 over 51 here. Let me do it properly here. 51. Oh, where did my other window go? Here it is. 24 over 51, cosine is 24 over 51. And then we have a right triangle. That means adjacent is 24, 51 is that. And then you can use Pythagorean's theorem divided by three, that's eight. It's an eight, 15, 17. So eight, 15, 17, but each multiplied by three, so it's 45. So then it's gonna be 45 over 51 because it's cosine of the other side. And let me double check in Desmos, 45 over 51 should be that. Yeah, see, it gives you the same answer. It <laughs> wasn't like, that's not the prettiest. I wouldn't recommend, I would just, re uh, doing that, I would recommend doing it the old fashioned way. 45 over 51, of course, reduces to 15 over 17. That's what I would recommend, but but you do have a, 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 an option in Desmos if you need it. Reach as minimum. Of course, you can use a calculator here. So check it out. 4x squared minus 50x plus 126. Again, I'm just graphing it. For what value of x does it reach its minimum? Where's the minimum? Let's find it. Boom, scroll down, and we got a minimum right here. At uh, And what's the x value? 6.25. Boom, done. All right. Line L passes through is parallel to this. Okay, yeah, 100%. You can use a calculator. So look, um, we got y equals 8x plus 2, and then we need a parallel line. So you should know that parallel, hopefully, is, is the same slope. So if you're like, well, how do I get one that passes through the origin? If you're not sure, you can kind of play around with it. You can be like, well, here's plus 3, plus 2, plus 1. Oh, yeah, plus 0. That makes sense, right? Because it's got a y-intercept at 0, 0. And then you're trying to figure out through the point 3, comma what. When x equals 3, pop it in there, what does y equal? And again, we're looking at the intersection with that purple line. Where? And there it is, 24. Um, 22, parabola, okay. Yes, you can use Desmos for this. Okay, watch this. So check it out. They're saying they're trying to intersect negative two, not, what is it, two x squared plus nine x. We're trying to see when, I'll say equals to y. You don't need it, but when does this intersect 2y equals, I see that, I wish they would have a counter, a slider option, but they must have taken it out. But that's good that they did that because it makes it a little tougher to, uh, you know, you have to, it, 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 it's, it would make it too quick almost, let's put it like that. But you don't need it. Look, I got it, it's, does one work? No, because I got two intersection points. But now you might look at it and be like, oh, I get it. If it's two, if it's three, if it's four, it's still two. So I gotta raise it up. Where do I have to raise it to? 10? No, that didn't work. 20? Almost. It almost worked. It's pretty darn close. What about 21? Nope, that was too high. 20, wait, 20.5, 20.2, 20. 
20.3, wait. What is the vertex of this? Oh, it's 10.5, so it's 20. One. No, wait, 21. No, 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 wait, what was the vertex? Hold on. I'm kind of, oh, 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 oh. It's, uh, you'd have to guess and check. It's double that, so it's 20.25. But anyways, you could figure it out, which is a little guessing and checking until you get it right there. But that's it, 20.25. Um, and you could, if you wanted to, you could isolate it a little bit more. You could be like this divided by two, and then that might make it a little, easy, a little easier. But anyways, see, you can do it with Desmos without knowing too much. All right, let's go on to the next section. You got to go in the test with a C, with a clear mind, Steven says. Yes. Oh, let me see what other people. So minimum is the X vertex. Maximum is the Y. No, 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 no. Ryan Martina, let me go back to your question. Minimum value of a quadratic. The min, If they say the minimum value of the quadratic function, that's the Y value of the vertex. But it's only a minimum if it's opening up like this. If it's a opening down, then the same vertex is now your maximum. But again, the maximum value of the function or minimum value when they say value of the function is always the y value. X value is just the x value that gives you the vertex, okay? Um, Ryan, you said the parabola equation for 2y equals c. How can we solve it without Desmos? That's not a parabola. Um, 2y equals, oh, uh, oh, shoot, to go back, okay. Well, what we would have done there is, I think it was saying like, inter I can't go back now, but to intersect at one point, right? You basically know it's almost always, not always, but almost always it's, and it's a vertical, it's a horizontal line. It's got to hit the vertex. So if you didn't have Desmos, you'd calculate the value of the vertex by doing negative B over 2A, okay? That gives you the X value, but then you need the Y value, plug it back in, get the Y value, and then whatever value of C is when Y is isolated gives you Y equals that same value, that's your answer. Because it's gotta be a horizontal line that just touches the vertex, that's the idea. Okay. Um, median, now there are median, there's a median function. Wait, now it's letting me add a slider. Okay, that's weird. It didn't before. Hold on, let's see if it, if it allows us to use the median. Yeah, look at this. Okay, so you can do median. If you didn't know, obviously it's easier to do it by hand. We can say 71, 72, 73, 76, 77, 79, 83, 87, 93. Um, and as long as there's your answer, that's pretty cool. Uh, I never use that because I just do it by hand, but that's kind of fun. Obviously this one, of course you can do it. X plus 40, um, you can do it as equals 95, but I, again, I like to do this, and I like to say Y equals 95, and then I look for the intersection of the two. Like each side is its own equation, and then you can kind of zoom out and be like, oh, there it is. X, and they're solving for X, right? So X is 55. What is the area of a rectangle with this? And I mean, this is just plug in, right? 17 times seven, area formula of a rectangle, 119. Okay, so you, I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, you could use Desmos, but it's just so straightforward. Without Desmos, right, it's 20. My, oh, oh, I'm getting the easy version of Module 2. I just realized because I bombed Module 1. I got everything wrong. <laughs> so I'm not, shoot, I want to show you more difficult ones, but that's okay. This will still be good. Anyways, yeah, I mean, like, this is not really needed. Um, The number Y is 84 less than the number X. I mean, this is just straight up interpreting the language. Y is, is re, uh, means equal. 84 less than X, X minus 84. It's literally D. Um, is equivalent to this. This is a great one for Desmos. So if, the, if you're trying to find an equivalent expression, right? 64 X plus 42 is equal to Y. There's one. And that's an interesting function. So which one of these is going to overlap it exactly? So it's 4 over X, let's try that slider again. Yeah, now it's letting me add a slider. So now you can quickly check each of these values for B, right? Does seven overlap? Nope, it doesn't, it's shifted. You can see that, right? If I do 10, does that overlap? Nope. What about 24? Nope. What about 252? So far, it's nothing's working. Wait a minute. Did I do this right? Four over X plus B, 24 over... 6x plus 42. Oh, I didn't say it's equal to y. Wait, what? 
Hold on. None of these seem to work. So let me go spec to seven. Ooh, 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 ooh. This is weird. Expression 24. Let me make sure I didn't make a typo. 64x and then 4 over x plus b. When I had it as 0, they seemed to match. No, it didn't. Um, 0. Oh, and x is greater than 0, so maybe we should only look at the right side. So 0, 7. The answer is 7, though. Because if you factor out a 4 out of each of these, I mean a 6 out of each of these, it's 4 over x plus 7. Why is 7 not working? Hold on. Sorry, guys. This is a little bit of a fail because it just should work. Okay, let me just get rid of the slider. Here, let's get rid of that. Let's say if I put just 7 in straight up. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. I'm so sorry. You can't do this for... Um... No. No. It should be exactly the same because you're multiplying the top and bottom by six, which doesn't change it. 6x plus 42. Wow, this is crazy that it's not matching up. Hold on. Let me see in my other, in my other Desmos app. Why is that doing that? 24 over 6x plus 42. That's so strange. 24 over 6x plus 42. 24 over 6x plus 42. And then we had, what do we have? Um, we had 4 over x plus 7, right? Yeah, look. They should match up. What? That's so weird. Why is it not doing it in this one? That's a glitch. Oh, oh, oh. That's why. No. No. Look at that. It's supposed to match. That is not good at all. If I, what if I remove the y? I don't know what's going on. I think maybe there's a problem with this Desmos calculator, which is shocking to me. No. <laughs> Typo. Did you guys catch that? It should be 6x. There it is. Now they're matched up. Oh, my God. That was my fault. All right. There's a good tip. Make sure to, to double check that you don't make a mistake in the calculator like I just did. Otherwise, you're hosed. But anyways, going back to what I was doing before... And then you'll be in a precarious situation like I just was. And I was like, what's happening? But anyway, um, so now if I add a slider, now you can see, right? We had 10 doesn't match up, 24 doesn't match up, 252 doesn't match up, but 7 matches perfectly. Hits it on the head. All right, next. Um, this is just straight calculated question, whether it's Desmos or not. Just taking a percentage. Um, yeah, this is not really a Desmos hack either. Uh I mean, there's a Desmos hack here. You can say, you can say six plus x and then nine. I mean, it's so easy to, to solve y equals nine. It's really much easier to solve this without Desmos, but you'd be like, oh, there's my value of x. It's three, plug it in. 18 plus three times three is 27. All right, it's defined by this. Yeah, you can solve it on Desmos. Again, by hand is faster in my opinion, but x cubed plus 9, and we're trying to figure out when x equals 2. That's what f of 2 means. And you've got your intersection right here, 217. Oh, the other thing you could do is this. Let me see if this works. f of x, and I think you can say literally f of 2. Yeah, you can also do it like that. If the function notation confuses you, just plug it in as is, and then you'll see, oh, and then the next line, f of 2 is 17. All right, the total cost f of x in dollars to lease 30, blah, 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 blah. Um, I mean, yeah, you can use Desmos, but again, you, it's it's pretty quick. 36x plus 1,000, and we're trying to say, you know, 400. I think x is the, x is the monthly payment, so you just plug in 400, and you got your answer. Again, plug and chug, you can use Desmos in the same way. This one, you have to know your your um, your rules for angles and all this. So if they're parallel, um, J is parallel to K. Well, it doesn't even matter. X is 
57 anyways. I mean, 47, because it's it's, the fact that they're parallel is irrelevant. That's just a linear pair. They add up to 180. Okay, this one's a good one for the calculator. So we got 7x. So I'm just plugging it in literally as is. That's why Desmos is so amazing. You don't have to move it around or isolate y. Has an x-intercept at a0. Well, what's the x-intercept? Negative 4.429. So whatever. It's a decimal, but hey, that's fine. And um, and a y-intercept at zero. No, and a y-intercept at 0b, which is that negative 15.5 so they want b over a so let's plug it in negative 15.5 over what was the x-intercept negative 4.429 i know we're approximating but it'll give us a good approximation 4.429 that's about 3.5 which is seven halves see so that worked oh uh an object travels at it nah not really desmos hack there Okay, you can use a Desmos hack here, and I'll show you how. We got two equations, and we got 16x. I'm going to say, oh, it's just, it just doesn't really help that much. But um, let me think for a second. Would it even matter? I just don't think it makes sense here. I think you should just use your regular knowledge. If you're doing uh, monthly payments of $16 each, you know it should be 16p. And the, you know, the down payment uh, is what you're adding to your, to your monthly payments because that's part of the payments, and then it should, so it should be C. You know, I don't see a real advantage for using Desmos there at all. Table shows three values of X and the corresponding values of Y. Which is fine. Okay, so this, yes, you can use a Desmos equation for sure. And I'll show you how. Uh, there's a couple ways to do it. First, I can plot these points. Boom. Um, one, 13, and you don't have to plot all of them. You could plot two is fine, but, and then eight. And then we'll see which one of these equations hits all those three points. Uh, oh, and a nice little thing you can look here right away. You can see it's a negative slope. So I'm already gonna exclude A and B. Um, and it's gonna be one of these. So negative five X plus 13, does that work? Nope, but the 18 hits them all. So you know D is the winner. Um, which number represents the height in meters from which it was kicked? Yeah, this 100% you can use Desmos for. Watch this. So I can say negative 4.9, but instead of T, use X. So otherwise, I won't graph. 7X plus 9. And, oh, uh, AM, I just realized you you uh, you caught my mistake. <laughs> Took me a while to figure that out. So then anyways, we got this. And it says from where, which was the object kicked. That's the, the height at time zero, okay? That's your y-intercept. But then you can see, oh, it's right there at nine, nine feet. Because it's the y value. The x value is the time, which is zero seconds. Uh, the table gives three values of x and corresponding values of h of x for the given, which table, oh. Um, here, this is how I would use my Desmos hack here. I'm going to say y instead of h of x, same thing x squared minus three, and it's saying which one of these, okay, so look, we have one, four, let's see it, one, nope, it's one negative two, so it's gotta be b or d, then two, one, it's saying it's the same for those, so we don't have to check them, and then it's either three, six, or three, three, let's see, it looks like three, six, so uh, b is the winner. Uh, linear function, f of zero is eight, f of one is 12, which equation defines f? Uh, yes, you can. Okay, so the way I would use Desmos for this, actually, wait, the easiest thing to do, no, wait, that would be two times. So one thing I could do is I could write down each equation. What would be the fastest here? Here, let's do it like this. I'm just going to say, assuming like you don't know anything about how to do a problem like this, I could say, start with A. Okay, there's my F of X. Then it says f of 0 should be 8, which it is, and then it says f of 1 should be 12, which it's not. Okay, so that, oh wait, let's say f of 0 should be 8, f of 1 should be 12, which it's not. Okay, let's make this a little, can we expand this? Oh, nice, nice, look at that. This is beautiful. All right, so a didn't work. Now let's try b for x. Doesn't work. We, we should see 8 and 12. Now let's try c for x plus 12. Nope, um, and then D is 4X plus 8, and we get 8 and 12 just like we need up there. Boom, done. Okay, so that's pretty cool. 
which equation this is isolating quantities i don't think you're i mean there is a calculator hack but like i would not recommend it because it's much easier to just isolate k right you minus 14 j and divide everything by five so it's it's a that's what i would say Last but not least, 22, side lengths of a right triangle is similar. Do, do, do. Mm. I wouldn't recommend using Desmos here. I would say draw it out. It says if you want tangent of W, and it says W cor and T corresponds to W, it's the same as tangent of T in this triangle. Um... Gosh, I can't draw it out really, but but that's how I would do it. I don't I don't even see a need for Desmos in this one. Okay. Okay, guys, we're gonna call it here. Um, let me wait. Which video is it? Yeah, here. Okay, I'm gonna minimize this. We're gonna call it here, and that's it. Those are the Desmos hacks and those are the predictions for all of that. So once again, I want to mention, let me just make sure it was in the description. Thank you guys for all the likes. I really appreciate it. That believe it or not, as minor of it might be to, for you to click the like button or do something like that or click subscribe, it makes a huge difference for the growth of the channel and the continued onward momentum of the business because we're really trying to do big things for all you guys. We're really trying to give you quality test prep material and test prep teaching aids and I think, I think we're, uh, we're on our way, but you guys are part of that mission because you guys help spread the word. So thank you again so much for that. Um, if I, let me double check. I don't know if it's in the description. Look, if it's not in the description, it's called the SAT crash course.com. So for the digital SAT, that's where you go. Use the code scalar. I just typed it into the chat. So that's the code you use. You get 20% off. They have, in my opinion, the best practice has buy a mile for the digital SAT. I've done some live streams using their test, but make sure to check that out. If you are studying for the digital SAT and use these, use these Desmos hacks, you can uh, use them in real time and they're fantastic. If you get really, really stumped again, your best option is to have a most thorough understanding as possible of the material and leverage that, but in a pinch, sure. Use it. Okay. It's been a great ride, Ryan says. Yay, me too. Uh, my exam is after seven hours. Good luck, everybody. Again, rewatch the prediction video that I made for the October test. I think that's going to come in handy, but this is the one you got for November. So happy November, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining. Have an amazing Friday. Good luck tomorrow, and I will 